permutations and combinations in the context of probability. So we're going to have a look at some questions and how you might be asked probability um, sorts of things with your permutations and combinations. Okay, so first example. Ian arranges to go to the movies with three girls and one other boy. So there's two boys, three girls. They're allocated five seats in a row. What's the probability that, firstly, no girls will be sitting next to each other? Secondly, Ian won't be sitting next to a girl. And the last one will be that Ian gets to sit next to a particular girl that he likes, Esther. Okay, so the first one, no girls will be sitting next to each other. In order to achieve this, we would have to have... Oh, well, first of all, we'll need the total arrangements to be able to answer any probability questions. So without any restrictions, we'll be doing five people in a row would be five factorial, so that's 120. Now, to put no girls next to each other, we'd need to arrange that in the following way. So it's girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. OK, um, and to do that, the girls would be arranged in three factorial ways and the boys in two factorial ways, giving us a total of 12, so the probability is 12 over 120, or 0 0.1. OK, second one. This would have to be arranged in one of these two ways that puts Ian on the end with the boy next to him. So there's only those two possible ways of doing it that would put put the people arranged so that Ian's not sitting next to a girl. So each of those is three factorial ways because we've got that, that block with Ian and the other boy is fixed. So the only things that could change are where the girls are sitting, so that's three factorial. And adding those two together gives us a total of 12, so our probability, once again, is 0.1. And the third one, Ian gets to sit next to Esther. So we put Ian and Esther in a group together. And we've then got Ian and Esther could be arranged in two factorial ways because they could be swapped over. And then to fill in the rest of the spaces, we have girl, girl, boy. So that's four items, Ian and Esther counting as one item. And then the other girl, girl and boy, they count as an item each. So we've got four things. They're being arranged in four factorial ways. So that comes to 48. So our probability there, 48 out of 120, would be 0.4. Right, next one. Jason has a dance group of five men and six women. The men and women dance as couples. No one minds who they dance with except for Jordan, who will only dance with Amelia. Jason picks a team of four men and four women. What's the probability that this team includes Jordan but not Amelia? Because that would be a problem. Jordan refuses to dance with anybody else. So, we want our total possible teams. So, that would be choosing um, four of the the men, so 5 choose 4, and 4 of the women would be 6 choose 4, so that gives us a total of 75. Now, including Jordan would look like this, so it would be Jordan and 4 others, um, so that's for the, the men portion, so we would be left with 4 men and we have to choose 3 of them, and then not including Amelia, so the women's portion would be we've only got five women to choose from because we're taking out Amelia and we're choosing four of them. So we get our probability cancels down to four fifteenths. And our last one for this video, we've got an AS math class with 22 year 12 students and five year 13 students. Three students are chosen at random. What's the probability that at least one year 13 student is chosen? OK, so first of all, I'm going to work this through the way I expect you would probably launch into it. OK, so we can either have one, two or three year 13s. So having one year 13 would look like this, where we're choosing one from the five and then two from the 22 year 12 students. Two year 13s would look like this. We're choosing two from the five year 13s, one from the 22 um uh, year 12 students. The order doesn't matter that we put these in, we're just making selections so we're using combinations not permutations. And then three year 13s would be like this. So we get a total of 1385. Now the total ways that we could pick any three students without restrictions would look like this. So our probability comes to this. 
Now that's the way I expect most of you probably would have first thought of it, but there is an alternative route to that answer. Now, what we can actually think about is how we could pick three year 12, so no year 13 students in our three. So that would be 22 choose three. And if we take that away from our total, then we've got how many would have at least one year 13 student in it. And we can use that to do our probability. Now you can see that's a little bit faster. So you should always have a think about the question before you launch into it and see if there's a faster route to your answer.